But now I want to get right into that interview with President Donald Trump. We talked about his preposterous guilty verdicts in New York, the massive swing in the polls toward him, and the flood of money that came in. And that was just the beginning. Here's part one. It has been a couple of weeks now since the jury found former President Donald Trump guilty of falsifying business records in New York. But to be fair, nobody's actually clear on what the crime actually was or what the jury actually found the former president guilty of. And since that time, there's been record-setting fundraising. As President Trump has brought in hundreds of millions of dollars and has returned to the campaign trail with vigor. This weekend, he will be back in Michigan, critical swing state. But today, he's right here with me. Mr. President, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Great honor. Thank you. So let's talk just for a moment about those convictions. Now that you've had time to let it sink in, what are your thoughts two weeks on? Well, nobody can even believe it. There was no crime. Everything was done perfectly. Uh, the, they, they came up with something through a con, really a concoction of different events, and it turned out that it's absolutely, there's no crime. If you look at Dershowitz, Alan Dershowitz, and uh, all of the great legal minds that, you know, they comment on this stuff, and you could go one after the other, there are a lot of them. Everybody agrees there was no crime. There is no crime whatsoever. And it's a terrible thing that happened with the, the judge, the prosecutor, Soros uh, prosecutor who got elected on I Will Get Trump. Sure. And uh, nothing was done wrong. You know, if you look at it, uh, legal, they talk about the bookkeeping. We pay a legal fee to a lawyer who is an accredited lawyer, and you pay a legal fee, and they call it a legal expense. So it's a legal expense is paid to a lawyer with a bill from the lawyer out in the open, and they called it in the books a legal expense. They didn't call it construction. They didn't go, everyone says, what else would you call it? There is nothing else you could call it. And that's the crime? Yeah. And it's it's terrible. It's it's, it's the not what America is supposed the to Justice be. No, it's terrible. And the Justice Department is involved in it, even though it's local. The Justice Department has been totally involved in it. And everybody knows that. And we can't let this happen to our country. There was no crime. And every single it looks like every single legal genius, every single scholar they're saying and people that don't necessarily even like me. So this is a terrible thing that's happening to our country. There is no crime here. I agree with There's that. No it's a terrible thing. Terrible thing. So, okay, so here's the next yeah. uh, part of the game. Uh, scheduling your sentencing hearing for July the 11th, four days before the opening of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee this year. Uh, what are your concerns looking at that from this, uh, this many weeks out? Well, I can't be concerned. I have, you know... Uh, a big campaign that's running. We're doing very well. We're leading in all the polls. Because of this rigged, rigged situation, it was a rigged, horrible thing. As you know, you've re been reading, the fundraising has been stronger than probably anybody in history. There's never been anything like this, the money that came in. And it came in from the time that this was announced, uh, literally from that time till present. The numbers are just monumental. Uh, it's, it's such an honor. And as you know, the poll numbers have been very good because people understand it. It's politics, and it's the worst form of politics. It's a rigged, it's election interference. That's all they're doing. They're trying to win the election with the worst candidate ever. Yeah, Biden is the worst president in the history of our country. And your numbers and destroying our country. You, yeah, you, with millions of people coming in totally unchecked, unvetted, with all of the things he's done. Think about Afghanistan, that disaster that the press doesn't want to terrible. talk about. Yeah. The whole thing, he just he just can't be a worse president, and we have to win. They're trying to rig it by doing these fake uh, cases and everything else that they're doing. And if you think about it, they want to raise your taxes times four, by four times. They want to raise everybody's taxes. They want to let millions of people into our country. They've already let 16, 17, 18 million in, and over the next few months, I mean, we're in— Big trouble. We are in trouble. Month. But I as mean, you I point out, that now, as you yeah, point I out, that now the Russia numbers are great. Is now has ships off Miami. I mean, no, I what's see that. What's going on with that? They have ships right next to Miami and Cuba. 
including submarines. Right. Russia does. What launching missiles and so here? forth. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. But you're exactly right about your numbers right now. I've got brand new numbers just came out uh, earlier today. You're leading in Pennsylvania by two. You're leading in Arizona by six. You're leading in the general election by two, three, four points, depending on where you look. You're, you're leading in all the swing states, including Michigan, close here, but you are winning. And that means that your message is resonating. I mean, it's a simple question that Ronald Reagan started with. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? And the answer, quite convincingly, is no, we are not. And then you look at Virginia is in play. New Hampshire is in play. Minnesota hasn't been won by a Republican since 1972. Yeah. It's a two-point race right now. I mean, you're neck and neck in that thing. Right. It's been amazing to watch. And, you know, when people say, how do you take this? It's so – I've had such support. I've never had support like this. And, again, we did great in 2016. We did much better, millions of votes more in 2020. But this blows them both away, the level of support and the level of enthusiasm. And they have no enthusiasm. I mean, the guy is a disaster. He's a disaster. The worst president in the history of our country. He's destroying our country. So we have to win. And, you know, don't kid yourself. This five months is, is a very dangerous time in terms of a World War Three. It is. In terms of a depression. He's, he's just a horrible president. He has no clue as to what's happening. Right, a lot of problems. I want to talk about another trial that obviously has been in the headlines. Hunter Biden now been convicted. And the laptop from hell has been verified as yeah. genuine by the Department of Justice, meaning the New York Post was right and you were right. But the media lied about it for right. years. To me, most notably, they lied in your face. Leslie Stahl, I remember this interview from 60 Minutes. She sat right there and yeah. almost mocked you for saying, Leslie, of course it's true. What do you make of it now? Well, she should apologize. She was uh, so strident. I'll never forget that. And, you know, like, uh, oh, this was Russia. This was Russia. How about the 51 intel agents, intelligence agents? They order every one of them ought to apologize and then drop out of government. And they knew they were lying. They knew 100 percent they were lying. So it turned out that now it turned it turned out that this was Hunter. And everybody knew that anyway. This wasn't from Russia. They said, oh, this came, this was made up, fabricated stuff from Russia, had nothing to do. But those 51 intel agents, and it was right before the election, and, you know, probably had an impact. But we had, we had plenty of votes. I mean, look, sure. we had plenty of votes. We had so many votes. But we're going to have a lot more votes. You know, we say too big to rig, but they'll try and rig it, but we're going to have them. I think we're going oh, well, to have a full blown, but they're bad people. They hate our country. They're in a full-blown panic, no question. You know, but I want to stay on this theme for just a moment. Speaking of you being vindicated, and really we could do this all day, things that you said that were attacked by the media that turned out to be spot on. Now we have all seen this tape in the last 24 hours, Nancy Pelosi admitting in the back of her Suburban the failure of having the National Guard ready on January the 6th was her fault. She says so, and now she's saying it's revisionist right. history. But it's on tape. There's Nancy. You offered 10,000 National Guard troops. It was rejected. Another infamous interview with Kirsten Welker of NBC News where she basically mocked you. But what do you say now that you see Nancy Pelosi saying she should have done more? This was her responsibility. Well, she lied, and this was amazing because it was a tape. Her daughter, no matter where you go, you see the daughter following her. You know, they probably want to make some money with uh, documentaries, but this was not good for her. No. And she admits that it was her responsibility, that it was her failure. And I said that from day one. We said a lot of things from day one. Don't forget, the unselect committee of political thugs, you know, that committee that was set up with Cheney and with Adam Kinzinger and all Democrats. Think of this. They destroyed and they deleted all the information that they had because they had a lot of other information, just like the Nancy Pelosi stuff. But Nancy Pelosi's daughter did us a big favor because she's got her mother on tape saying that it was her responsibility, which it was. She was responsible for what happened on January 6th. She certainly was. Now, maybe this comes up. During the debate, we're only a couple of weeks away from the first debate. Never had a debate in June. It's what the Biden campaign asked for. Raises a lot of questions. Why do you want it so early? I think I can uh, make some assumptions. But just a couple of weeks away, do you think Joe Biden can actually get up there and pull it off? Audience, no audience, doesn't matter. One-on-one, -on -one, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one competition to answer questions coherently with you. He doesn't want to stand. He apparently wants to sit. Um, do you think he can make it through this? 
Well, when you look at him, you'd say no. You know, when he was in Normandy, a lot of the soldiers refused to shake his hand. They didn't want to shake his hand. They said, he's not, we're not shaking his hand. He's not our president. You saw that. Yeah. And uh, that was loud and clear. They're not, they're not for him. And he looked like a fool. He looked so bad. By the way, they were 20 years older than him. They looked a lot better than he did. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I can say this. If he does make it through, which I think he will, you know, they're going to feed him a lot of stuff. If, and we should do a drug test. I'd love to do a drug test beforehand. Well, but you have to if wonder. If he makes it through, no matter what, how bad, no matter how bad he is, they'll say he was great. He was genius. You know, well, of course, they that's what they'll say. Do. But you look at the State of the Union and the way he performed there, and then the way he performed yeah. in Normandy, for example. These are two different people, very different. But let me yeah. let me ask you this: If Joe Biden has a bad night or is removed from the Democrat ticket for any reason. Does that matter to you? Or do you just target the policies of the Democrats because they've all been riding with Biden, they've voted for all these bad policies, whether it's the border or Bidenomics or the war in Ukraine, whatever it is they're voting for, the Democrats stick together. So does it matter to you if, if Joe Biden wasn't on the ticket because a lot of people speculate he could be gone? Does that matter to you? Well, you know, interestingly, they've done polling and I do better against almost everybody. This guy does better than the Democrats that you're talking about, right. including Whitmer. Uh, he does better than them. I don't quite understand that. I'm a little surprised. But uh, he actually polls better than all of the people that you're talking about. And so they don't they don't want to take him off. It depends. Maybe I'm better off losing the debate. I'll, I'll make sure he says I'll lose the debate on purpose. Maybe I'll do something like that. You know, but he really, I mean, he, it's very interesting. I've been asked this question. If he does badly, will they take him off the ticket? I don't think so. Uh, and let's say he gets through, they'll, they'll make it like I watched his, his state of the union and you did. And I've watched other sure. speeches. Every time he gets through a speech, they say what a great speech it was. They were not great. No, they were not great. And most so of them anyway, are terrible. Most of them are terrible. All, all I can do is do the best you can. You can't hold back. You have to do what you have to do. Sure. And if they keep them good and they don't keep them. But isn't it strange that he seems to poll better than the people? That uh, to me, that's about. remarkable. I mean, we see him on the world stage. We see him well, here I think at home. It's remarkable, too. It, it, it's remarkable that he polls better. Shocking, really. I want to shift gears a little bit. I understand right. uh, you're going to be meeting with Mitch McConnell for the first time in quite a while together. And together, you two got three vacancies filled in the Supreme Court. So you did some great work that was really important and has been yeah. ever since you left office. The question is, can you do it again? And what is going to be your message behind closed doors with these Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, on Capitol Hill? We have to stick together and we cannot let them weaponize the Justice Department, the FBI, against Republicans, conservatives, Catholics. I don't know what it is with Catholics, but they're really after Catholics. And, you know... Maybe you know better than I do, but something <laughs> happened. And But they're after groups of people, Christians generally, and we have to make sure they cannot be allowed to weaponize. And basically, the Republicans have to say, sure, look, we've been very unified. Uh, I won quickly. I won quicker than anybody's ever won in terms of the nomination. Right. I won quickly, decisively. We have tremendous support, uh, much more support than even in 20. You know, 20 was great, and 16 was great. 16, we won. 20, we got millions of more votes, we won. But we have much more support and I think even more enthusiasm. And I think a big factor there is we've seen we've seen the worst president in history. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a genius president by comparison to Biden. Jimmy Carter was a genius compared to Joe Biden. Well...